mad settlements at the wild edge of Afghanistan. The way some of them behave around conference tables with Pakistan's military elite and how they interact over endless cups of paiucha in tea rooms is quite an interesting experience. As a journalist, David Rowland practiced an odd profession of probing into people's lives for two decades. He met more than his share of public figures who didn't measure up to their press. Rellin was also opportune to visit several Pakistani villages where he was welcomed like a long-lost family, simply because another American had taken the time to forge peaceable ties there. This piece will take us through the last 10 years of the story of Greg Mortison's existence. It will further branch and fork into the rich and complex aspects of his life, beyond what most could achieve in a lifetime. Our little efforts can have far-reaching effects, so do all of that little that you can. Here we find a fancy way of saying that this is a story to comprehend by a straightforward observation fully. All of the Westerners who traveled down to the CAI's 53 schools to visit Mortison ended up working there as an advocate for the period of their stay and some beyond. In times of war, you often hear leaders, Christian, Jewish, and Muslim, saying, God is on our side, but that isn't true. In war, God is on the side of refugees, widows, and orphans. Greg Mortison Americans ought to learn from their mistakes, from their flailing and ineffective ways. The Western world has a lot to learn from Mortison's life. The likes of the U.S., which conducted a war on terror after the attacks of 9-11 and failed to make any tremendous impact on the peace-loving people at the heart of the Muslim world. There's a lot to learn from the trajectory of Mortison's life. Examine the many insights in this summary and catch a glimpse of life from the perspective of a social revolutionary, Greg Mortison. Key Point 2 It is really by sheer will and perseverance that Mortison started and completed his mission in Pakistan. Mortison had to show remarkable resilience to survive the harsh conditions of the mountain and the many hurdles he had to face to build schools. After he tried climbing the summit of Mount Godwin Austin and failed, He got lost on the mountain. Alone, cold, and afraid, he had to find a way to deal with his present predicament. Remember that the beginning of a journey is usually filled with so many obstacles. You'll want to quit, but that's when you should soldier on. The weather was unforgiving, and the heights made the air much thinner. Mortison was forced to adjust constantly to changing temperatures and wind speed. He was exhausted from the climb, and although he tried not to sleep for fear of the unknown in the area, he succumbed to sleep. He endured the cold night and somehow found his porter, Mozaffer, who offered his tea and yak butter to keep him warm and fed. Luckily, he wandered off from the watchful gaze of Mozaffer and found himself half a day from where he was going in Corfe. He introduced himself and his destination, and they promised first to nurse him to health and subsequently offer directions. This community would later mean more to him than he could have imagined at the time. Keep in mind, the gift of kindness and hospitality is priceless and should be one we all offer to strangers, regardless of their origins. Grateful for their hospitality and kindness, he promised the village head, Haji Ali, to build a school in the village. He encountered his porter once again, who had found him in Corfe. He warmly welcomed all famous figures in Pakistan, and Mortison paid him his first salary of 3,000 rupees. He felt the need to add some value to their lives as they had with their hospitality. Mortison brought the reality of many communities, just like Corfe, to a global audience. These communities were with little or no form of education, and how they were not seen as necessary enough to arm with the chance to feed their minds. It also tells of the ills of illiteracy. Mortison could feel their lack because of his roots, coming from a family of teachers who had spent a good chunk of their lives bringing education to villages in East Africa. Key Point 3 Mortison's mission to create world changers in Pakistan was helped along with the aid of formal education. Education is power, and in the hands of the disadvantaged, it is an excellent weapon for change. Unfortunately, in some places of the world, education is seen as a privilege, only meant to be given to male children, and as such, the female child is greatly ignored. It is important to note that Mortison was immediately drawn to this ill, where the male children were beneficiaries of the minor form of education in the community. Keep in mind, change can be slow and expensive, but it's worth all the stress in the end when it's followed through. But as this piece highlights, educating the girl child is a cost-effective endeavor that will go to great lengths in changing the community. It helps to improve the social and economic state of the community. 
If you educate one girl child, she'll educate more, and those will go on to educate more. Of course, the task to do so is almost arduous because of the location and its overall lifestyle, and of course the cost of it all. Mortison wasn't rich, and of course needed to solicit help to accomplish this. He returned to the U.S. with the promise of returning and building schools in his sister's honor. There will be excellent resistance to change, even a lack of support, and you will want to quit. Don't. He spent his time in the U.S. working as a nurse and living in his car. The situation seemed hopeless. Nobody wanted to invest in a little village in faraway Pakistan. It won't make the headlines. But he finally got some hope in the form of a $12,000 check from Gene Hornai. This giant seed gave him the boldness to travel back to Pakistan and make good on his promise. A place associated with war and terrorism, Pakistan is overlooked by everyone else. But Mortensen was prepared to dedicate his life to his goal. This dedication paid greatly as his initial supporter, Gene Hornai, after passing away, left him a million dollars and appointed him as director of the Central Asian Institute. He opened more schools, built and established more humanitarian projects, even with numerous threats to his life. Key Point 4 Mortensen's time in Pakistan opens our eyes to a glaring reality. Humans aren't so different from one another. Mortensen would soon find out that people of different races and cultures aren't so different. People of the world are subtly warned against visiting the Middle East because of the continued violence and terrorism. Mortensen encountered and experienced this level of danger. It would seem like an unfair judgment of the region if not for the presence of the Taliban, a terrorist group that constantly terrorizes the region. But even without them, the region was harsh and unforgiving. The reality of a people or place does not lie in the media's stories. You must find out for yourself to avoid making ignorant assumptions and judgments. During his stay there, he had first to survive the harsh environment of the mountain, Mount Godwin Austin, and fend off the threats of death from the locals later on. After that, the real challenge was the adaptation of students and schools to the daily struggles of the average child. The struggles of the people of Pakistan might seem so different and harsh, but this is the same struggle faced by other communities in literally every other country of the world. However, each community can find a way around the harsh conditions of the climate and its culture to thrive regardless. Human nature resonates all around the world. The capacity for good and change is the same in every one of us, and it continues to be the driving force behind socioeconomic change if harnessed by the right people. Another element of human nature is language and how it differs from place to place, person to person. Mortensen learned a significant difference in language and dialect, even in a region where he found himself. Yet, with little time to learn all of them, he stuck to the basics and leaned on translators' help as he made his way through the region. As a result, he came to understand, as would the readers, that humans interact much better when you speak their language. The diversity of cultures and languages shouldn't cause fear or criticism, but spur appreciation and a curiosity to know. This language barrier is why his mausifer was vital in his journey. He both spoke and understood the language and the people's cultures of the various places they went to during Mortensen's mission in Pakistan. Key Point 5 all it takes is one person to see beyond the stereotypes to affect positive change outside their town, city, or country. Mortensen was just a random American, but he could affect significant change on an international level. His origins made his task more challenging, but not impossible. He simply had to bring his mind to adapt to the realities in Pakistan. Like Mortensen, the readers don't know the real Pakistan, and believe what was told to them about the violence, the poverty, and the seemingly savage cultures of the people. However, this summary is a chance to see the beautifully diverse cultures present in the region of Pakistan and its neighbors. Remember, stereotypes are formed and enforced when people refuse to seek the truth for themselves through human interactions. It is an educational story about education and its benefits. A country without education would be unable to create wealth, manage wealth, treat diseases, or do any crucial actions that keep a country alive in today's world. This was the state of Pakistan. The terrorism experienced in Pakistan, according to Mortensen, is a direct result of a lack of education. The only way to reduce it is to educate the people of the region. 
Unfortunately, this is also true about the other nations of the world who would launch attacks on the region, believing it was justified because some people believe everyone there is a terrorist. With three cups of tea, Mortensen hopes to show the bridge between education and peace and bring it to fruition in the hearts of both sides. Proper education is a key to ending a lot of evil in society today, starting with the regions ravaged by terrorism. Although it looks like both sides are different in government structure, culture, and gender, they're pretty much the same in the core of their systems. They both seek peace and wish to empower and educate their upcoming generations. They both want a better future for their children. Both believe the other is the enemy, and attacking them would secure this future. It's sad, but the present generation are going about these exact plans the wrong way, which Mortensen tries to portray with his body of work. Key Point 6 Mortensen's journey debunked a lot of fear and anger towards the people of Pakistan and the religion of Islam. A recurring theme is a disparity in religion between Mortensen's origin in America and Islam in Pakistan. This difference in religion made it difficult for any kind of proper interaction for change to be made. Because of the bad reputation both religions have on the minds of both nations, Christianity is seen as an evil religion by the Muslims in Pakistan, and in the same vein, Islam is seen as a religion of violence and bloodshed by Christians. So there's an apparent hatred between both groups. Although it is justified because of the teachings, it is also ironic because of the self-same teachings that have many similarities. And ironically, as well as the tendency for each religious group to branch out and create different ways to practice the same religion. Don't forget that religious tolerance is an important trait we all must yearn to possess as it rids our society of needless deaths and violence. This choice or power to choose the method of worship within a religion makes it quite difficult to pinpoint its primary purpose. It also increases the tendency for the religion to be used for whatever purpose the followers choose. During his time in Pakistan, Mortensen wished to bridge the gap of understanding between the religious groups by educating both parties. He believes that good people exist regardless of the religion they belong to, and that it would be beneficial if people work together without considering the differences in their faiths. What we are trying to do may be just a drop in the ocean, but the ocean would be less because of that missing drop. Greg Mortensen The view of the average non-Muslim is that of fear and anger. They've had to experience violence at the hands of radical Muslim groups, and even those who haven't have seen on the news one act of terror or the other by Muslim groups. So, on average, there's a fear associated with the religion, a fear that was lacking in Mortensen himself. Remember that when you get a clearer picture of a particular religion, you are afforded a great privilege, an education that frees your mind and shields it from any further confusion. Key Point 7 Trials can be stepping stones to greatness if you take a different perspective on them. It is important to note that Mortensen had one plan to climb Mount Godwin, Austin, and place his sister's necklace at the summit upon arrival in Pakistan. He would later find a straightforward plan, but not so easy. This marked the beginning of his hardship as he failed to reach the summit, but found Mausafer. However, it would later be instrumental to his journey and a new mission in Pakistan. He also found it challenging to keep up with his newfound tour guide, lost his way and stumbled upon the village of Korfe, where he met Haje Ali, the leader of the village who took care of him and fed him. Mortensen noticed that the village lacked a school and promised to pay back the kindness he received by building a school when he returned from the U.S. A worthy course is made all the more rewarding when you defeat a host of obstacles to achieve it. This desire is met with great difficulty. He was broke and could not fly back to Pakistan, much less talk about building a school on his nurse's salary. So, he spun it to his favor and solicited help from whoever listened. Mortensen wrote over 500 letters. He finally got a response from a man who would change his story ultimately. But even then, his mission was met with more difficulty as the culture of the people seemed to conflict with his, and they made it a challenging task for him to establish a school there. Moreover, having to deal with the threats from the religious and community heads concerning his mission in Pakistan was a given. They felt he was here to enforce the Western lifestyle and rid them of their original ways. Keep in mind, sometimes those who wish to liberate might see you as an oppressor. Therefore, you must approach this with patience and understanding. 
Mortensen had to go head-to-head against many obstacles and a handful of hardships to find a way to the top. But his story should inspire anyone that regardless of the hurdles, you can achieve any dream you set your heart to, as long as you are dedicated to the goal and you pursue it with singleness of mind. Conclusion Lost and alone at Mount Godwin Austin, the world's second tallest summit, Greg Mortensen, who had attempted to place his sister's necklace there and failed, is set upon a life-changing journey both for him and the inhabitants of the villages in the region. He encounters great difficulties and resistance, but is in fact able to come out of it triumphant, a changed man, and a pioneer for formal education in Pakistan. His mission was supposed to be simple, honor his dead sister's memory with a cliché and normally expected gesture, like taking her ashes to a popular tourist location like a summit or a lake, or in his case, taking her necklace to the summit of a mountain. But it blossomed into something more profound and life-changing for little girls and boys on the far end of the world from the U.S. He was able to truly honor her memory with the establishment of schools and various humanitarian organizations slash projects in the very misunderstood country of Pakistan. All of this started with a promise, made in gratitude to the treatment he got when he found himself lost and alone on his way down from the mountain. He had wandered off and if not for the villagers, would have either died from the cold or starved to death. Instead, Mortensen was rescued and well taken care of. He would be unable to repay them with money or anything that would have been spent in a hurry, so he decided to give them a gift that would last forever. Try this. It pays not to make rash judgments of a person or a place until you have sufficiently educated yourself on all the details and aspects they possess. Identify that resource at your disposal which could completely liberate and transform another. Endeavor to seed it and watch it yield limitless fruits.